potty time is party time. Lately, we've been trying to be consistent with potty time with my daughter. You know, it's around that time where she needs to, you know, get those things going. Yeah, we've been trying to do that with her. It's been interesting. It's been a lot of accidents here and there, but the main thing is I just wanted to continue to do what I need to do to like stick with it because I think we're on the brink of actually getting her to pee in the potty. We actually got her to pee in the potty, which is awesome. She has this little thing where she runs from the potty and she's like, uh, we're still looking into that and seeing how that's going to get done. So at one point I was doing that like every single morning when she woke up. Got her a little banana because she likes to eat bananas in the morning. Yeah, I sat her on the potty. But now, there's a lot of things coming up and I haven't been on my job pretty much. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that I actually learned that if I'm more consistent with, with it, then I have really better results. Consistency is so important. I just need to stick to it and get through with her. There has been, you know, little milestones here and there. She actually peed in the potty. I used to be a trash cook. I think I was a trash cook. I didn't know like the basics of cooking, but over time, as I continue to read up on things, continue to practice it over and over, now I'm a chef. All right, it's time to talk about the email service app. To be honest, I haven't been consistent on it, but I did get this done. Yeah. All right, enough of the dramatics. This is what the button does. When you click this button, it's gonna essentially send out a request to the server, to my cloud functions, and it's gonna invoke that cloud function, hit that particular endpoint, to create a session ID. That session ID is gonna come back as a response to the client side. And then from there, it's gonna go through this whole Stripe API redirect that I have in my client side. And it's gonna essentially redirect that session ID to a checkout Stripe portal. Once we get there, we can fill out our information and so on. And you get a confirmation page when it's confirmed. It's gonna send back to, to the client side and get a confirmation page. But if you cancel, it's gonna give you a cancellation page saying it had cancellation. Like I said before, like I never wanted my customers or clients or people who come to the site to store their information on my servers. I essentially allow Stripe to handle that information. I have it now where Stripe is handling the checkout form. The whole redirect to a whole checkout form completely off of my site to Stripe site. And then, then they handle the encryption and security of the information. That's less headache that I have to deal with for two days, roughly eight hours working on this consistently, I was able to change up how I was architecting the system. At first I thought I was gonna rely on the cloud functions to call out to Stripe to get customer information. That changed given that the customer portal and the webhook Stripe has now. I don't remember ha Stripe having this functionality last time I worked with it, but it's been like over maybe three years working with this payment gateway system. So they did a lot of development during that time. So it was really awesome that they have these webhooks and this customer portal and even have a subscription portal as well so that you know users can come and manage their subscriptions. Like I said, it's gonna completely streamline my whole entire implementation. It's gonna really speed up the development now that I have these different integrations with Stripe to help me out. And the cool thing about the webhooks, I didn't really show in this video, but probably in the next video, is that when a certain event happens on your particular account, pretty much these webhooks are just like events that happen on your accounts. So if a payment or a subscription, cancellation or something like that happens, 
then it will send out to an endpoint that you specify and it essentially is gonna you know provide that information to that server when those events happen on your stripe account it's really a cool feature i think it's like really good because like i said i don't have to rely heavily on my cloud functions to call out to stripe to get cu customer information every single time something happens it essentially is going to be doing it on its own and the webhooks is going to essentially allow that to automatically happen without me you know scheduling jobs for it so it's going to be really useful and i would say this if i wasn't reading and consistently working on it for those two days when i was working on it i wouldn't found out all this new functionality that stripe has now and more importantly it's going to streamline the integration and implementation of this email service app so that's going to be really cool I think one of the things I didn't do with this particular app that I usually do with a lot of apps that I build is pretty much make a list. I pretty much dive head into it and yeah, I didn't really think about what what's to next. I did design out, you know, the the system and everything, but typically I like to go by a feature list and point out those items. They like to call this a backlog and scrum or agile processes. But yeah, I usually do like some type of list like that and pretty much knock out that list little by little until I get my minimal valuable product. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing next in order to stay on top of it. And it's gonna be like right in front of my desk so I can see it every single day. Keeps me accountable. And yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for this vlog, so. That's too much fun. All right, peace out. Mm -hmm.